And last will be Judith Meyer. She has been creating art for five decades. She's a well-known in LDS circles as the creator of illustrations and paintings of the church's CES department, portraits of general authorities, and a large mural in the family history library entitled The Internal Family Through Christ. Judith is pursuing a more socially conscious agenda in her work with paintings on topics that re, uh, react collective angst as well as community action and togetherness. You may have seen, I'm just going to show you some stuff that you've seen, possibly, in the, um, oh, it takes, okay, no, no, that's fine, oh, they're just paintings, um, then I did a bunch of portraits of general authorities, oh, I have to tell you a story. Okay, I painted Power Hunter's portrait for the official. He wasn't the prophet then. He was a, a and to go in there and I had to go inside his uh, office to photograph him for this portrait. The minute I walked into his office, I was met with the most intense shot of pure love I have never ever experienced in my life and this man this man's only one and I've done Hinckley's portrait so anyway, he was the only one that had this like incredible Christ like being so at the time that I painted this I had just discovered my being gay and so when I was called to go in there and paint his portrait I was worried that, that they he was going to see that evil <laughs> thing that I just discovered about myself and instead he showed me how my savior really loved me and uh, that was one of those amazing things so here's a, a Spencer W. Kemmel portrait in you know. <laughs> I mean, if you have a question about them, I'll tell you. I, I don't want to sit up here and talk about these paintings. I want to talk about the fact that for 25 years, I did a lot of work for the church, and at that same time discovered that I was gay, and then I was also entering a same-sex relationship with my partner of 27 years, and we raised her her four kids, we went to church, we were in very much in the closet, I had to be in the closet, I was painting for the church, she had to be in the closet because, you know, she was a teacher, and we 
spent all these different ways trying to fake out that we were a, a couple. I had my house and she had her house. We were a block apart. And I was Aunt Judy. The kids grew up calling me Aunt Judy. Nobody knew. And uh, it took a tremendous toll. So what I'm saying for you, you youngies, don't wait for 40 years to figure it out. Okay? So during the same time that I was painting these paintings for the church, I was also exploring my own uh, problems. And so I paint a painting here about my barrenness, the fact that I wasn't having my own kids because I was gay. Then we go back to doing these illustrations. For <laughs> <laughs> and all these things that, you, okay, they use these in the, you know, you've seen it. I'm sure some of you have seen some of these. And then, okay, so here's another barren one. I'm walking away with my hand empty away from the fruit tree. I mean, I was going through a lot of interestingly uh, problematic feelings. <laughs> But I still had my testimony, and I still believed that the church was true. I still believed everything. I also believed that God loved me as a gay person because during the discovery period that I went through when I thought I was at the, you know, the lowest person in the world, um, and that I thought, oh, well, that means that everybody is here, and I'm now down here, and I'm supposed to do all of these little things like read the scriptures and pray and all this to get back up to just this level because my mom gave me the book born this way with a question mark have you read this book yes. sorry <laughs> so uh, I, I knew I knew something deep inside that it said no no you're not down here and then you have to come all the way up here. It's just something that you are, and you have to love, and know I, I love you. So Heavenly Father directed me, actually, to be in my relationship with my partner, to help her with her four kids, to help her raise them for 27 years, to do all that stuff. He instructed me to be there. So I'm saying, this is so strange. I'm active in the church. I'm doing paintings for the church. I'm dealing with general authorities, and, you know, just besides being gay, being a woman dealing with general authorities and artwork in the church is a whole nother topic altogether. <laughs> and so then I have to paint my own amazingly deep spiritual things, and this is called the altar, and it's about, and this, this big red thing, I don't know if you can see it, but it has all these slashes you know, big, deep cuts into it. That's the altar of suffering, and then that, that's my redemption cloth, and it has a little Christian symbol up in there, if you could see the little, anyway, stuff like that. Okay, back to illustrations. <laughs> so, so all this foment going on during the time I'm painting for the church about my own personal thing, because I'm living a lie. I live, I'm, I'm, I'm living a lie in my personal life, trying to be something I'm not because I believe so intensely in Jesus and Heavenly Father and the whole gospel. And then I'm, it's just so much pain, so much hardship, and so hard to deal with it and so hard to keep going. So eventually my mental health needed to take me out of activity. And so I petered out of the, these are just, you know, paintings. And petered out of that and started painting my own, um, just, just general paintings. This is uh, my son, actually, <laughs> in a made up little scenario called a coin, yeah. Um, and my aunt, and you know, just, stuff you may have seen in various places. Um, I couldn't go to church anymore. I couldn't go and be subjected to living that way. I still couldn't come out. I still couldn't be out until uh, 
Okay, and this is my really trying to control everything tight, tight, tight phase where every little thing had to be just perfectly tight um, in order to control what was happening with my emotions. And so um, that lasted for maybe 15 years. 15 years I could not go to church. 15 years I had no community. 15 years I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I let the church paintings kind of peter off. Nobody asked me to paint anymore after a while. I quit being involved with a ton of uh, those kind of people that I knew. And then, um, amazingly, <laughs> you'll never guess what happened. The November 2015 policy thing happened. And guess what happened to me? Um, suddenly, I became, first of all, so fearful that when they discovered that I was in a relationship with someone, that I would suddenly become an apostate. And then all of my paintings, all of my contributions, all of that stuff to the church, I thought, oh, they're just going to have to get rid of them because I know what they, I actually know what they, because one of the paintings I had to do for the cover of the uh, Strength of Youth thing, they had to have me paint all the pictures of the people on that cover instead of using actual photographs in case one of those kids turned out bad. So if they had a painted photograph, nobody would know that was that person. So I knew the possibility of what they might do to my art. So all of a sudden a fear just overcame me like crazy. But then, amazingly, the other thing that happened was the realization of what this was going to mean to all these little tender hearts of young people, the kids that I knew that were just discovering who they were, were all of a sudden going to start saying, I can't be here, I have to go. And so the fear that I had of mm, their suicide thing made me just obsessed and I had to write an op-ed and basically reveal myself to the public as a gay person and uh, try and get that conversation rolling from there. So in January 31st of 2016, I, the, uh, an op-ed that I wrote pu was published in the Salt Lake Tribune, kind of outing myself. Um, so I didn't, at that time, think, you know, I didn't know what would happen to my art, but I knew that because I had a modest little fame there with that group of people that maybe they'd listen to me hopefully exhorting them to love their kids no matter what, whether they're gay or whatever. Well, that got published and it got a lot of notoriety at the time. And uh, fortunately, <laughs> nothing happened to my paintings. As far as I know, they're still there and they're still being used and people aren't, you know, slashing them and, you know, tearing them out of the book and not using them. And yet, at the same time, it, it showed that all kinds of people in the church who had been in the church, who are in the church, who are contributing to the church, who are doing so many things with their talents, they, they could be gay. Who knew, you know? And, oh, She's really cool, and we all like her anyway, and she's gay. Okay. So it freed me up, and so I am free. I am free now. And subsequently, <laughs> so then, I, okay, so yeah, now we're just doing landscapes here for a minute. Um, I had to do really emotional venting landscapes. So I just went and started doing these landscapes that like, you know, like, oh, you just have to have this big emotional blow up just to get myself all out there. But at the same time, 
I also started to say, well, what the heck, I have a talent. Why can't I paint something serious? Maybe I'll start painting, um, you know, something important again. Because I, I, th I really did consider that my artwork for the church was very important, and it served its purpose. But now, maybe I'm going to start painting something that um, is really deeply meaningful to me, and I don't have to be afraid of anything anymore. So I started painting these social statement paintings. And I got obsessed with this one. And I saw this little boy from a Aleppo, you know, ambulance. And I just like, how do I comfort him? So then I had to find angels. And I had to put them all together. And then I had to, this thing's all over the world now. It got kind of like, what a viral or something. <laughs> I don't know why, but they like it. So now I have all these friends on Facebook that I can't read them, their posts, because they're all in Arabic or some sort of Polish or some sort of other thing. But it's kind of fun because it's like, wow, all these different people. And so I, this is what I'm doing now. I, I'm free. I'm still Mormon in so many ways. I'm Mormon in that. I, ha I have my God, I had God come with me, and I've had interactions with him so, for the whole time, all of this transition. He's been aware, he's let me know that he's keenly aware of my every thought and every move, and he's been with me all the time. And my, my religion now is to love God and to serve his people and to love all of his people. And so all I care about, I don't care about ordinances. I don't care about rules. I don't care about box structures. I care about people, humanitarian, human interactions, love. And so here, oh, here's another one I did. This is the water protectors at Standing Rock. You know, and I've got other ones in process right now, but they're not done, so <laughs> you can't see them. <laughs> but anyway, the, the whole thing that I'm trying to say now is I am intensely attached to God. And it's the God I learned to love when I was in the church. And it's the same God who's come with me through all of this time it's it's time for us not to ever have to live deceptive hypocrisy types of lives. I don't know how to say it any other way. I didn't read my talk. I could have had a much more, you know, normal, organized talk. But hey, this is really how I am. <laughs> so I, I, I think this group is amazing. I think that you have the right thing. You can have all this combined differences. To, you have different stories. You have different um, missions. I have a mission, and I still know that I have a mission. I have a mission that God, the God from my youth, the, the same God, has helped me and directed me. And that's what I want you to know. You, he's the same one. Even if you don't believe in God, he's still there. So, <laughs> sorry, atheists. I mean, I, I hang out with atheists a lot, but, you know, whatever. <sighs> so that's what I wanted to say, and I thank you. And um, so now you know, just don't hide it ever again. Thanks.